Hello everyone, a warm welcome to Scottish Golf's latest Zoom webinar. I'm Ian Evans, the club business manager at Scottish Golf, and I'll be your host again today. With golfers up and down the country enjoying the opportunity to get back out in the course following the Scottish Government's easing of restrictions, Scottish Golf remains committed to providing our affiliated golf club with, op with opportunities to learn and share best practice through our regular Zoom panel calls. Following the return to golf, many golf clubs from across our community have been in touch to make us aware of an increased demand for golf club memberships. We have pulled together two case studies which will be shared with all attendees following today's webinar, which highlight the success Codder Golf Club and Tully Allen Golf Club have both had in implementing social media membership marketing during recent weeks. If you haven't been able to join before, the Scottish Golf webinars are a new interactive series for golf club managers and officials from across the game in Scotland and will be insight driven by our online panel of industry experts. The webinars give you the opportunity to learn from and pose questions to a panel of experts within the field. And today we are delighted to welcome Davis Jones from Davis Jones Consulting, and Kenny Morrison from Paisley Golf Club to join us in discussing social media marketing of golf club memberships. We've received dozens of pre-submitted questions, so thank you for taking the time to send these in. But don't worry, if you didn't have a chance to submit a question in advance and you would like to, then you'll be able to submit your question in Q&A function just at the bottom of your screen, click on the button and type in your question. Also, you may find today's discussion prompts you to think of questions that relate to your current situation. So please do submit these and I'll try to get to as many as I can. Okay, now to, the, to our panelists. We're delighted to be joined by two panelists for today's discussion, and I would like to take this opportunity to introduce them both. Firstly, we have Davis Jones of Davis Jones Consulting. A passionate golfer himself, Davis has expertise in growing participation in the game of golf by supporting golf clubs all over the world to acquire new members. Having recently worked with a number of Scottish golf clubs, Davis is a specialist in golf club digital marketing and social media and is joining the panel today to discuss a variety of different tips of the marketing trade that clubs may find useful in capitalizing on the current boom in demand for golf club memberships. Good morning, Davis. Good morning, Ian. Thank you. Good stuff. Great to have you. Uh, I'm delighted to say we also have Kenny Morrison. Kenny is the current Managing Secretary at Paisley Golf Club and has been working in golf management for 15 years after working for the Bank of Scotland. With a diploma in golf club management from the in club management from the um, Club Managers Association of America uh, of Europe, excuse me, Kenny is also a member of the Scottish Golf and Club Managers Association board with a remit to focus on education. Kenny will share his experience as a club manager using social media as a tool for membership marketing, no doubt some other uh, insight points and tips with his experience as a golf club manager. Good morning, Kenny. Morning, Dean. Great stuff. Thanks for coming along. Okay, the format of today's webinar will pre submit questions to the panel on key areas within, within golf club membership marketing and to share best practice, some, uh, some, some tips of the trade that can support clubs during COVID-19. We'll also mix this in with live delegate questions. So just another reminder to send those in using the feature below. And we will uh, also touch on a couple of case study examples from across Scotland. And the details of these case studies will be shared with all delegates following today's call. Okay, that's enough from me. Uh, let's get into it. I'd just like to begin, as I have done in most of the other webinars, by giving the panel the opportunity to talk um, openly about how the COVID pandemic has affected their club or their business. So starting with you, um, Kenny, how, is it, how has the pandemic affected your club? Any kind of headline measures you've had to put in place? And now that you know more than we did you know, a couple of months ago, what's your outlook going forward? Yeah, thanks. Well, probably, well, Paisley's really a, a members orientated club. So we're probably the same as most clubs in that area. So straight away we went on to furlough uh, all our staff with the exception of myself and a few of the greenkeepers. Uh, with regards to the committee, we went on to have regular weekly meetings discussing mainly cash flow, looking at the uh, revised budgets and the funding requirements that was out there by the government as well. So really dealing with that. So sometimes it was sitting in a queue to get onto HMRC for three hours to find out about the PYE and deferment and things like that. So yeah, a lot of work in the early days then sort of focus changes we've went right through the period. So um, I really have a hands-on captain at Paisley, so we speak four or five times a day or maybe an hour. Um, so at this stage, we could always bounce ideas off. So that's been really good for me, uh, just working in the office myself at the club. Fantastic. One of the main concerns that we had was we're just uh, currently doing a £150,000 bunker renovation uh, when lockdown started. So we're sitting there with a course with uh, a number of bunkers uh, with no sand in them and worrying when we could get sand in them uh, for golfers coming back to play. Uh, 
the last thing we wanted was to reopen the course then having to close a number of holes uh, when everybody was dying for Oh, is he, uh, Kenny, I think you've maybe uh, frozen there. Right, well, we'll, go, we'll, come, we'll come back to you, Davis, till Kenny comes back in again. We've got some technical issues there. You obviously don't work in a golf club, but you work with a number of golf clubs. Um, have you got any general insights on in how the golf club industry has been, been faring under this uh, pandemic? Sure. So I think the main one is a resurgence for golf. Um, you know, because there are limited activities people can leave their house for. I mean, I think everyone's seen a spike in demand, uh, particularly with millennials, you know, people my age and up to 40, um, especially down the local driving ranges where I've been practicing. Uh, it's become like the new pub almost. But um, back to golf, golf clubs more specifically, uh, I think the focus has been on the golf course itself, which is fantastic. Um, obviously, no, no, no better or, or worse, but the hospitality has not been there. Um, and also one, one last point I saw during the middle of lockdown, and I think it's still prevalent, is as Kenny said, he's a members golf club. So a lot of the, no, the visitor golf has, not, has been limited and restricted. So golfers have, had, have, um, have had to take out a membership to play golf in most cases. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Kenny, we, we lost you there. I know you've got some some internet issues where you are. You were just touching on the, the bunker. and Yeah, so yeah, just finishing off on that. So we were lucky enough to get the course more or less ready for the members coming back. Just uh, in our membership, our membership year at Paisley runs from October to September. So the majority of our members have already been invoiced. So the only hardware, the monthly direct uh, monthly direct debit scheme, uh, we still have people still to pay in that. And lucky enough, we had no designations. Uh, we, so full membership, no, no members lost and anything like that. So we were pretty lucky with it. Um, moving on, just sort of then focused after for the, re the end of COVID, we're sort of looking at the reopening with regards to risk assessments, introducing a tea booking system, which we've never had at the club, bringing in the social distance policies and really get uh, regular communication with the members. So on the whole, it's been pretty good. Uh, keeping our membership numbers where we were before COVID, uh, that's really down to the, the supportive membership that we have here at Paisley. So um, going forward now, we're really looking at, uh, we're now back at all our greenkeeping staff, uh, so everyone's back working. It's only now the clubhouse staff are now in furlough. Um, so that's where we are. So probably the next challenge will be when we're allowed to open the clubhouse uh, to provide a service to the members, but also making sure that we make it profitable. So we'll probably have to look at the part-time furlough system, uh, see how that works when the full details are now out, I think maybe tomorrow, uh, and just maybe plan ahead for the next six or eight weeks to see what we want to do. So, yeah, so Okay, uh, great stuff. Buzz. Thanks very much. Um, great. I mean, you truly got your, your finger on the pulse of a lot that, that's going on there. And David, you mentioned something interesting. Obviously, a lot of people, um, you can't not taking visitors are primarily uh, servicing the members. So I think a lot of people have also seen their local golf course in a way that they haven't before because they've had access to it. And that's, I've certainly heard, heard a lot of this about people being almost inspired to join the club break down some barriers there. So I'd like to get into the, the purpose of why we're here. Obviously, social media marketing. A lot of pre-submitted questions that came in we're kind of around, well, what does that actually mean? What, what, what process would you go through? And of course, the club can do it themselves or they can engage a third party, such as yourself, Davis. So just first of all, I'd like to ask you, um, Davis, essentially the customer journey, but to start with, in your experience, what are the stages a manager would go through before doing it themselves or engaging someone such as yourself? Okay, yeah, sure. So I think most golf club managers have heard the term social media. It's been a bit of a buzzword in the last few few years and they know the power of social media marketing and the digital age that we're in. And so they've probably had a little look about, I think they are aware that they are going to benefit from getting out on more platforms. So, and so they're solution aware. So that they, so, so that they actually know, what they could be using to get in front of more golfers, i.e. social media and the digital marketing side. So it's about choosing the right provider and one that can provide a, a personalized and tailored service to their golf club, whether it be venue bookings, green fees, society days, membership, etc. cetera. It's, it's about choosing the right service provider to accomplish the goal that you're trying to accomplish. Um, with these, uh, with the um, social media marketing campaign. 
for example, with Kenny, it was a membership drive campaign. Sure, excellent. Um, and I mean, Kenny, I'd like you uh, to bring you in here because obviously being a private members club, which most clubs in Scotland are, you very often have to get things through a committee. And I just wondered, uh, in my experience working with clubs and business planning and governance policy, getting through a committee can be quite a difficult thing to get unity on. I just wonder, um, what, um, what would you recommend to other managers who are trying to bring the committee on side? Because um, you might have, you might have even have some resistance from committee members that aren't proficient in social media or just resistant to it. Did you have any resistance? And I don't really have any resistance. This was really the first main campaign I have done via social media as a club manager. Previously, I'd done leaflet drops, targeted leaflet drops when you get information about how many letters you've posted and things like that. But this was the first one. Uh, really that I've done as a club manager uh, using a proper company. I've been at seminars and uh, various education events and came across different companies. Um, I think it was last September I first met Davis when he was presenting uh, at one of the SGCMA events. Um, so he was offering to take on a couple of clubs to showcase what, he's, what he could do. Uh, and it was really, when he was going through the presentation, it was really the return on your investment is far greater than you could get anywhere else. So that's really the main thing that attracted me, um, to outsource it as such, uh, to let them use their skills and take away the added workload from myself. So um, really just a few telephone conversations with Davis, let him set up the landing page, let him set up the, the advert, let him set up the spreadsheet, and we can uh, sort of communicate thereafter. So um, once the committee see the return on investment and a couple of case studies that Davis provided that there's certainly no no one can argue against not doing it, I think. Yeah, so to provide that information. Um, yeah, interesting. So um, so you obviously uh, saw the, the return on investment and I will come maybe come on to some of the, the, the stats that that produced a little bit later. So maybe we're saying that Davis and I were uh, on Kenny's recommendation before COVID-19 lockdown hit, considering going around the country doing face-to-face -face seminars, free to attend for clubs, uh, on social media marketing, hence why we're, we're now here, obviously, a little further down the line. Um, so Davis, I'm just trying to, so you've, you've got the job, essentially, um, you've got the club on site. Can you tell us, for the benefit of those listening, what would the customer journey be from effectively getting approval to work with the club to more members? What does that, what does that journey look like? What are the main stages? Sure. So, so as Kenny mentioned, there are um, a few calls. Um, one main call, and it's to sort of it's so I can learn more about your specific golf club's needs. You know, as I mentioned before, there are multiple elements to a golf club's business. So it's learning what you want to do with social media, um, learning a bit more about your target market. You know, is it an intermediate membership campaign? Is it uh, a typical full membership over 35 campaign ladies or as, as I said, and it's learned. So it's, it's, learning about the golf club's needs, learning about the target market, learning about the offer, so I can really tailor the, the, uh, the uh, campaign and make it personal to your golf club and not so I'm just applying a template on top of something I don't know anything about. So that's the first stage of learning about the golf club. Um, and then the second stage, once we've decided what we want to do with social media, it's about gathering information from the sorry not 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 information member testimonials or customer testimonials so for example with kenny um i asked him if he could go and collect some member testimonials from his existing members as this is a core element of the customer journey of a golfer becoming a new member it's about seeing what other people are saying about the club it's not just about what you're saying about your club um, and also some photos uh, so kenny for example got photos of his track man, got photos of his golf course, pro shop, clubhouse, anything that's at the golf club, if we could get some quality images of um, that we can use for the campaign, as Kenny mentioned, on the landing page, and then for the um, adverts themselves, people playing golf, so people can imagine themselves at your golf club, purchasing your membership, etc. So that's the second stage, collecting member testimonials and photos, and then the third stage is launching the campaign. And so on that, just before going to the third stage, because um, we had a couple of uh, pre-submit questions about the importance of photography and video. Obviously, they're not cheap, but I mean, well, I suppose what, um, how you define that, but how mm. you think is having good creative, having good uh, photography and video assets to be able to run effective social media campaigns? 
Yes, so yeah, um, it's definitely important to have high quality images. Um, something I also advised um, or advise my golf club clients is to really, to I mean, any phone has a great quality camera now, so you can take it upon yourself to take the photos. If that's not possible and you're a bit busy, maybe asking a captain or a, existing members, members of your committee, to go out and, and use their smartphone just to take some images. Um, as I said, the uh, typical smartphone has great quality images. So yes, the importance of updating images. Um, I know a lot of golf clubs have images from five, 10 years ago when the quality might not have been as good and things might have changed. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that, so on the, you've got the images, but again, um, some um, pre-submitted questions. What do you need to get right? Are there any hints and tips you've got around creating attractive and easy to understand adverts? I know that they have to be optimized for social media and busy, lots of text doesn't work. So sometimes less is more, but have you got any, what are the key things you need to get in an effective ad? So an effective ad can be made up by the headline, the body copy and the image. And as we've spoken about with the image, reflecting the customer and their imagined self having the membership, so playing golf. Um, with the headline, it needs to be attention grabbing, um, useful, it used to, needs to be a benefit. So for example, um, with Paisley, we actually said, read this if you play golf twice a month or more. Because I know that if you play golf twice a month or more, you will benefit greatly from a membership, from the saved costs that you're going to incur. Um, for example, and also the headline can be, um, can create some urgency. So we mentioned in one of Paisley's ads that there were limited membership vacancies in a headline to get people reading. Uh, with the actual body copy of the ad itself, um, keeping it to one sentence per line and having lots of space so people can read it nice and easy, no, no block text, um, keeping it customer focused, talking about the customer, and how they're going to benefit. Um, so outlining core benefits of the membership can be a great way to explain the be a membership offer via a social media app. Okay, so we, we mentioned there, we touched on a lot earlier about the, the club approval and kind of have much pushback from his committee because I guess there was a lot of, there was a good argument put forward and um, uh, there was a lot of information. So getting on to the, the, you're launching a campaign. I mean, what are the nuts and bolts? What are you actually doing when you start to advertise on social media? When you've got the club approval, you've got your, your ads uh, decided on, what, what, what then do you do? So using a tool called Facebook Business Manager, you can go to the back end and make sure that everything has gone in properly and you can assign the budgets accordingly. Um, the nuts and bolts, um, there's a lot of button clicking, but if I was to give you some core principles, it's variation. It's about, you know, taking multiple different images, uh, multiple different adverts and headlines, um, and just testing them all because you might find that some images work better than others and some ads work better. Um, but yeah, to, to really focus on the nuts and bolts, there is a lot of button clicking and um, you're, you are creating the campaign and, mm -hmm. and uh, having multiple ads within the campaign okay. um, and you can manage the budget. Great. So just conscious time coming on to, so you've clearly you're on, you're, you're managing a campaign ongoing that I assume is cre generating interest, leads, prospects, however you want to put it. What does that look like and how do you then, once you've got someone... What does it mean to become a prospect? How do you capture them? And then if you can talk a little bit about what you then do to actually turn them into a member, because that's really the overall objective. Yeah, sure. So just to use an example of how it would have been done. So for example, let's say 20 years ago, it would have been a news, a newspaper ad. And at the bottom, it would have been call to inquire. And um, rather than that, it's on the social media advert. There is a link to click that the takes them to the landing page that has a contact form if they're interested and then they would submit their details. It would come through as a lead, which Kenny mentioned comes into a spreadsheet. So that's, so that's what it looks like. It's the social media ad web page lead generated that comes through to the club, the club manager live so that they can follow up with that lead nice and quick and offer them more information. 
Brilliant. Um, what one live question have come in? I'd just like to do that before I come on. I'd like to come on to you after this, Ken, to get what you actually do to then convert. But one that's come in from uh, Janet Hamlin. Um, what would a first cost threshold be for starting a campaign? So if a club's looking to do something, test the water. Do you have any? Is there a certain figure you'd put on a an initial campaign? Yeah, sure. So. Obviously, the more you can test, the the more likely you are to, to succeed. Sure. Um, so there is a minimum cost. I usually recommend £500 a month as a commitment. So if we break that down, that could be £125 for a week. Um, but just, just know that if a membership's worth £1,000, you know, you can ideally pay up to 500 pounds to acquire a member. So it's, so it's worth your, it's really worth your time to invest in it. Um, but if I'm going to answer Janet's question, um, 500 pounds a month is uh, a figure I recommend as a minimum. Okay. So that'd be for the whole, the whole campaign. Surely that, I mean, I know, I know that there'll be smaller figures in there. Clubs are looking to promote an, an open day or promote yeah, yeah. more membership. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so a, like a single, a, a single ad, I, I believe the lowest you can go, you can actually go down to a couple of pounds, but yeah. to, um, to actually reach a substantial amount, I think, well, from experience, you can reach, you can actually get a thousand impressions for around five pounds. Okay, brilliant. Um, so coming on again, just cost of time, Kenny, I mean, you've, you've then got the lead. What are you, I mean, are you just picking up the phone and trying to make a sale or is it, did you have a process in place for, for converting? Yeah, actually, um, the lead comes through. You've got an email address and a phone number. Um, so I would uh, look to contact them all within by phone within the first 24 hours of getting them. Uh, if I can't get them, uh, within the spreadsheet, there's follow-up one, follow-up two, follow-up three, and Davis also checks it on a regular basis as well. Um, so, yeah, I would normally try and contact by phone uh, day one. If not, leave a message and call back l later on. So, uh, last resort would be only to email. My uh, process would be always to start a communication by a conversation over the phone, then just to, and also invite them up to the club at that stage if they want to show down. So just a general chit chat to start with, ask mm -hmm. them if they're new to golf, if they're new to golf mem uh, membership or club, etc. So really just uh, sure. the first step in building a relationship with them. So always by the phone, I would, I would sort of go by. Great, and, and this is a slight extension, but obviously we want members to stay in the club for their lifetime, ideally. Um, yeah. Do you have any process you take them through to orientate them? Because you know, there's lots of literature that suggests that people will leave a club because they don't feel welcomed in as part of the, the whole club. Do you have any other steps you take them through to try and um, give them Yeah, well, well, we started, um, when we ran, we ran the first campaign with Davis, we were also tying in a, a discounted golf lesson with them. Um, so they would get a half price golf lesson with our, with our new pro. Um, so it was really getting them to integrate within the, the for get them to meet the pro as well so uh, we also have a, a welcome meeting for everyone that joins where they get to meet a couple uh, of the committee members so they've got a face that they know for every time they're at the club so we have mm -hmm. a couple of committee members that they meet with them okay. and also the next step we're doing is um, a, a welcome golf event so maybe we'll go out in twos and threes when we're allowed and the pro will go out in the first game and drop back every couple of holes and play so and we'll just come in the clubhouse a couple of sociable drinks. It's really getting integration into a club uh, environment. Indeed, because of course being a golf club member is, I mean, we're there to play golf, but it's so much more than that. It's more about the, the camaraderie and being part of being part of the club. So that's fantastic. Just a little plug uh, on the Scottish Golf website club business section. There's a bunch of resources on membership recruitment and retention uh, around or member orientation, uh, you know, welcome pack templates. If anybody, just to, just to plug that, if any clubs want a bit of written guidance around Member retention as well. So, just coming on to some of the some quick fire ones, if I can, that were uh, pre-submitted. So, Davis, um, how important do you think a club logo is, uh, or is the USP or the core kind of um, benefits of the club more important? Sure. Yeah. So, I was, I was, I was, I was thinking about this one. I mean, the logo is certainly not the most important thing, is it? I think it's a long way down the list. Um, however, I think if you're striving for excellence and excellence in all areas a nice clean logo i don't think you can go amiss and i know with things like fiverr and all the other free free um lancer sites where you can pay someone as little as five pounds to design a logo for your club that looks nice and neat it's very very it seems simple to do 
Um, on the second part of that question with the USP and the core stuff, I think that's a lot more important. You know, if you can offer, as Kenny said, a 50% off the first pro lesson or um, you host weekly member sweeps, I feel like stuff like that is so much more important than a, than a logo. Okay, sure. Um, Kenny, we had a couple of questions around flexible membership. I don't know if you offer me the club, but just as a club manager, is it something you've considered? What's your view about flexible memberships? Yeah, I suppose for, we don't offer them at Paisley, but yeah, they'll certainly work for many clubs. And I think a lot more clubs in Scotland seem to be signing up to the, the flexible membership. Um, they certainly can introduce people to the game of golf who don't want to make the commitment of perhaps a thousand pounds a year for a, a membership, uh, and certainly for ones that don't have the time. It's really up for each club to decide: is it for them? Uh, as I think the problem is the pricing of it. Um, it's really to get a balance between what your existing member or full membership is paying and what a flexible member is going to be saying. So it's quite hard to, to price, but yeah, they certainly got a place in the market. And if they bring people into the game, yeah, the better for it. Yeah, absolutely. And again, just to, there's a resource on flexible membership on that section of the website I mentioned before to give um, um, clubs a guide on some of the key things to consider when designing one to, to them, you know, propose to committee. Um, uh, back to Davis, with a limited marketing budget, how can uh, my club advertise for new members in a very competitive area? So with a limited budget, very com lots of competition. Mm, sure, sure. So, I mean, in, in a competitive area, you, you really want to be marketing, definitely, because um, then you get in front of your competition. Um, but on a limited budget, um, as we mentioned before, you, you actually can uh, run a social media ad, a, a, a single ad, for as little as five, five pounds. Um, I don't believe there are magazine or, or radio ad deals that actually go as little as that. So I, I think social media is the best place to start um, with a, a limited budget and it's nice, free and easy. Um, no, not free, sorry. It's nice and easy to, to uh, use and you uh, do get quick feedback. So on a limited marketing budget, say for a hundred pounds, you could do a week of social media advertising. Okay. So, but I just want to say Albert Holt has just commented that flexible membership has worked really well at Forensic Golf Club and a number of them have then moved on to full membership. I'm an advocate of it. I think it might, might demograph flexible membership, but you have to get it right. You have to really understand what you're doing there. And again, I would just point people to that resource and they can also pick up the phone to me if they want more kind of impartial advice on that. Um, back to you, Kenny. This is maybe a, a bit of a difficult one, but I think it's important that we, that we do ask it. Again, it's a pre-submitted question. Do you feel clubs should be offering deals to new members to join at the moment when their existing loyal membership have stood by them and have had very little golf this year? You there, Kenny? Have you frozen? <laughs> That's an interesting question. It's an interesting question. Well, I think Kenny's frozen there again, but what do you think about that one, Davis? I mean, there's a, there's a fair of obviously members standing by their club, clearly getting less productive, for want of a better way to put it this year. Um, but then obviously clubs wanting to max out membership revenue, which then in turn might imply a deal. Well, how do you get that balance right, would you think? Would you say? Well, I mean, yeah, certainly look after your existing members. And I know at the moment with the increase in demand that you might not necessarily need to run a deal. And some argument, there actually may be an argument for never having to run a deal because you know the value of the product that you're giving to your customers. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my my view would, would be don't don't run a deal at the minute. I think there's enough enough demand out there. Yeah, it's a very concise answer and a very good. And maybe just have one more before. I think Kenny have a better insight, though. I, have. I think Kenny's, uh, apologies, Kenny did mention at the start to us uh, he was having some internet problems. Um, okay. Um, it, how would we attract more younger golf members and in particular women and men in the 30 to 45 age group? I know that there's a lot of data to suggest that people in that age group tend to uh, be more nomadic players or not and not in a golf club membership. Um, have you got any hints how you might target a group to come into club membership, Davis? Yeah, sure. So you would, you would tailor the campaign towards that demographic only and you would think specifically what are the common problems and, and fears and perhaps objections that this age group would have? 
such as I, I don't I don't have enough time to play 18 holes on a Saturday. And you could be like, well, you don't you do not have to play 18 holes. You can just play six at our club. You can play nine holes. You know, it's it's about understanding that age group and, you know, creating marketing material that talks to that age group specifically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, well, actually, we've gone slightly over. So do you want to say any? I think we've lost Kenny, I'm afraid. But uh, do you want any closing remarks, Davis, before I kind of bring, bring this to a close? Yeah, sure. So if anyone's interested in learning more about social media marketing and would like um, a free campaign template to really spell out what it is you, you actually get when you sign up for a social media campaign, I'd be more than happy to show you on a quick video call exactly what I take my clients through and how it works, answer any questions. Um, so Ian was mentioning earlier that he's happy to put out a link um, in the comms. Um, so please, uh, if you are interested, I'm very happy to take you through a quick video call uh, anytime this week or next week. Um, Excellent. So yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your, your time today, Davis. Obviously, I know you, you um, don't just kind of talk the talk, you walk the walk as well, which is why we've got you on here. So I just want to close by saying, ladies and gentlemen, um, this brings to close our Scottish Golf webinar. We'd like to thank our excellent panellists, Davis and Kenny. Unfortunately, we lost Kenny at the end uh, for their invaluable insight and advice today. We'd also like to thank Corridor Golf Club and Tully Allen Golf Club for their support and providing insights into our case studies, which we will distribute to all delegates shortly. I'm sure that we will all agree this has been some really valuable discussion, which will support all of our affiliated golf clubs. To our delegates who have joined today, we thank you for all your questions and hope you've enjoyed today's webinar. If you've missed anything from today's webinar or would like to catch up on any previous ones, then you'll be able to watch them all on our website at scottishgolf.org. From myself, Ian Evans, panelist Davis, and there's Kenny, come back just at the end. <laughs> Sorry about that. And all of us at Scottish Golf, stay safe, uh, enjoy playing your golf, and a very good day to you. Thanks. Cheerio. Bye, guys. Thank you.